What is up, Buttercup? We're going to make some enchiladas today. Uh, Tex-Mex enchiladas with ground beef, a uh, little bit of onion in them. But we're going to make our enchilada sauce to go on top of them. Uh, you can use a canned enchilada sauce if you want to. Um, to me, it tastes like uh, metal and has kind of a really weird taste to it. So. When you can make your own, why not? So that's what we're going to do. We've got some ancho chilies and some New Mexico red chilies here. Uh, I'm going to use, let's see, we got here three, four, five, six, seven, about eight anchos and what, one, two, three, four New Mexico reds. When you're picking out chilies, uh, if you're buying them in a bag or if you're buying them a bulk, in a bulk situation, Always be sure that they're pliable and soft. Uh, don't buy the ones that are that are hard uh, and just crack when you touch them. These uh, are good. The other ones are, you don't need to use those. Anyway, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna seed and cut the stems off these. And then we're gonna rinse them off. And then we're gonna put them in, in some uh, hot water and let them sit for a while. So. Real simple process here. I want to do this. I think you got the idea on this. And we'll be back in just a second and finish up this uh, process. Okay, I've got these seeded, uh, stemmed and seeded. And I had a pot of water that I brought up to a boil and then I turned the heat down. We're going to drop these peppers in here and then I'm going to lay this lid down and that lid is going to kind of keep those peppers submerged in the water. Uh, we're going to let these sit and steep for about an hour and then we're going to come back and pull them out. We'll put these and I've got three uh, cloves of garlic over here that I've kind of roasted a little bit. I'll pull the peppers off of those. We'll put all that in the blender add some water and we'll blend it up and start making our enchilada sauce we'll be back in a little while we're back our peppers have been soaking for about an hour uh, we're going to pull them out put them in our blender it's cooled off I'm going to stick these in the blender and add three cups of water, one and a half teaspoons of salt. Our uh, three cloves of garlic that we stuck in the uh, iron skillet and roasted off are already in the blender. And that's all of them. So, I think we'll add our salt, one and a half teaspoons. Got to blend this for about five minutes. I'm going to crank up the blender. And we will be back in a few. Stay with us. Okay, we've let it run through the blender for about five minutes. Uh, I'm going to strain it to catch any of this uh, skin that might not have uh, blended up very well.
this should turn out to be a really smooth sauce this incidentally can be used this chili puree can be used uh, not only as an enchilada sauce but it can be used as a base sauce for a chili con carne we're not going to leave any goodness behind so let me go ahead and get some more of this going in here I think that's probably all we're going to get. I'm going to run this through this strainer and I've got uh, two tablespoons of oil. Uh, you can use uh, a canola oil or if you want to uh, be really traditional you could use uh, a lard or maybe a, a shortening. Uh, but I'm using a, a canola oil and I brought it to bringing it up to uh, kind of a medium heat we're going to put this in a skillet iron skillet there and we're going to let it uh, kind of cook and simmer for about five minutes stirring it to keep it from uh, sticking and burning think we don't scrape that off the bottom to get that goodness too and that's the nice sauce that we wound up with now we're going to uh, put this in the skillet uh, I probably think it's probably maybe warm enough going to kind of let this simmer for about five minutes like I say you need to stir it uh, frequently to keep it from sticking and burning on the bottom uh, when it's through I'm gonna put it back in this bowl and uh, we'll let it cool and we'll check it to see uh, if, if it's too bitter we can always add a little bit of sugar to it but we'll let it cook for a while and we'll see how it turns out we'll taste it and uh, if it needs some sugar, we'll add some sugar to it. Our next step will be to make our enchiladas, so stay with us. Okay, we're back. Uh, while our, we're letting our sauce cool off some, uh, we went ahead and used about a half a cup of diced onions and a pound of ground beef. We sauteed that up real good. Uh, I added uh, two teaspoons of a Mexican seasoning actually it was a taco seasoning added that to the meat I also added uh, three spoons of this these tablespoons like this of our enchilada sauce into the meat to kind of give it a little bit of something to help it stay together so now we're going to show you the process of putting these together I've got some sauce here that's cooled off some and I'm going to actually Actually, we took these, before I go any farther, we took these shells, these tortillas, pardon me, they're not shells, they're tortillas, uh, and we ran these through uh, some oil to kind of limber them up a little bit. So we're going to lay this in, like so, coat it good, let the excess drain off some, lay it here. Put about uh, two spoonfuls of meat in there. Take this, roll it over, tuck it in, roll it up, and lay it in our casserole dish. I think I can probably do this without those tongs just as easy. There's our clock. And this, yeah, there's our clock. Uh, this is a little bit messy, but hey, 
uh, it's going to be well worth it. So. Show you one more here and then we will uh, finish these up off camera and be back when we get them all in, a, in the uh, casserole dish and I'll show you where we're going from there. So we'll be right back in just a few minutes. Okay we are back. We've got our enchiladas rolled. Uh, they're ready for the cheese and some more sauce to be put on the top. As you can see uh, not everything's perfect. We had one kind of crack a little bit but hey that's okay. Uh, I'm going to just kind of drizzle a little sauce over the top of these like so. Then I've got some Colby Jack. You can use Colby Jack. You can use uh, Monterey, uh, Cheddar, whatever cheese you like the most. Uh, Monterey Jack would probably be really good on these. I had Colby Jack, that's that's why we're doing it the way we're doing it tonight. And you might be thinking, man, that's an awful lot of work. But let me tell you, it's going to pay off because you're really going to enjoy this and your family's going to love you for it. And they're going to say, man, where did you learn how to cook that? And you can say, hey. I've been watching just cooking with the guys and that's how I learned to do it. So we want to pop these in a preheated 350 degree oven. And we're just going to leave them in there long enough for the cheese to melt. So I don't know, five, ten minutes and we'll be back and we will check them out. So we'll see you in a minute. Okay, we left the enchiladas in the oven long enough to uh, melt our cheese. And I'm going to plate a couple up. We have a pot holder here to kind of help hold me down. I'm going to lay those little dudes right there. Take just a little bit of cilantro and lay it on the top. Heck, I might as well go ahead and plate up the other one here for my wife, too. That way she won't be trying to get into my plate. I might. <laughs> okay, there you have it, my friends. Beef enchiladas with a homemade uh, enchilada sauce. We got some pico to go along with it. A nice little bit of fresh cilantro on the top and a couple of chips to go along with it. And I think I want to get a bite. Actually, let's see if I can pass this over to my helper. She may be pointing the camera in the sky right now, I don't know. <laughs> Yum. I'll tell you what, a lot of work went into the sauce, but I guarantee you it's well worth it. Well worth it. You do not want to buy the canned enchilada sauce when you can make your own at home. It's so much better, so much better. Hey, thanks for stopping by just cooking with the guys. I'm Phil. I appreciate you watching our videos. Um, if you will, if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and each time we do a new video, you will be notified. So for now, we'll see you.